Hey everyone, my name is David Eberts and we're going to look at cell to cell junctions which are different than cell to cell molecules which were talk, talk, touched upon in my other video which are selectins, cadherins, immunoglobulins and some integrins but basically all these things are comprised of those molecules this is just the more macro view and just like the whole compound or the whole the whole structure or junction. Adherence junctions uh, are very straightforward are comprised of cadherins. We talked about E cadherins holding epithelial cells together really well. AJs or adherence junctions do that right here and basically just hold cells together. Tight junctions are were the ones that were originally thought to be comprised of occludin, occludin but then later found out that there's a lot more other stuff involved and that maybe one of the other ones is Claudin. Claudin. But basically tight junctions help to waterproof, I think is the good way to put it, waterproof cells. And because when we have two cells together, there are certain structures right here that when solute was put, put above Top, excuse me, when solute was put above the cells, it would flow near the tight junctions, but it would never get past it. And something was blocking and keeping it tight, and that was tight junctions. So it waterproofs it, makes sure stuff doesn't get down in between the cells that's not supposed to be there. Desmosomes are important for cells that undergo mechanical stress. And we didn't talk too much about what they're comprised of, but what we did go over is that it's um, connected to intermediate filaments, connected to intermediate mediate filaments in cells. And so intermediate filaments, if you know, are cytoskeleton proteins inside the cell. And so when we have a cell down here, we have, I'm just going to draw them like this. We have intermediate filaments which go all around the cell and do different things, la di da. And desmosomes can essentially connect with this and stabilize the entire cell that undergoes mechanical stress. So connected intermediate filaments for, um, for, resistance to mechanical stress. So it connects with the inner cytoskeleton of the cell and basically if the cell is moving a whole lot or getting pulled around, this desmosome will hold it stably in place with extracellular matrix, sorry, with other cells and so that they don't get jumped around. And so that's an important thing to note here, sorry. So this would be another cell. So essentially it can connect cells to cell. And if we had another cell like this, another desmosome, connect stuff through here. And anyway, that's we didn't go too much detail into that, but just know that it is used for resisting mechanical stresses and um, uses cytoskeleton to hold things together. Then the final things are gap junctions, which are comprised of, let's see what color it's going to be, connexin, connexin, and uh, what, it does, what it's used for is communication via solutes and ions, etc. via ions, solutes, etc. And what it looks like is we have two cells and there's, it's almost like a channel looking thing where there's these subunits that form together and there's this opening in between them where solutes can flow freely in between it and they can speak via that. Um, let's see if I can try to draw it. And 
and basically you can imagine there's a big hole in the middle of this complex where things can flow through it and go from one cell to another cell. This is very important in uh, like heart cardiac muscles has a bunch of gap junctions for communicating very quickly so you can send, send solutes and everything back and forth. So gap junctions uh, lend communication, desmosomes help with strength of mechanical forces, tight junctions are good for waterproofing cells or just solute proofing. And then here junctions are good for holding cells together in general. And those are the basic cell-to-cell -cell junctions that you should be concerned about. Good luck!